thank you for coming tonight. Uh, my coworker, Kim Kiskinen, and I'm Heather Johnson. Uh, we are a couple of librarians who happen to own some chickens who we do this somewhat successfully. And we are doing a program for you this evening called Chickens 101. Um, we are not chicken experts uh, by no means. Uh, we have uh, raised chickens of various sorts. I've had chickens for almost 30 years and- I've had them for about 25. So we thought we would do a program. Kim has done this program in the past and we have revised it and revamped it and made it more spectacular for this evening, just for you. All right, so we have a slide how this is going to work. Uh, this program is virtual and live. So there might be people that are watching it virtually that have questions. Um, we're just going to be kind of laid back with this one. So if there are people who chime in with questions, we might just stop and address their questions instead of waiting till the end. Um, do you want people to wait till the end to ask us questions? Um, or if, if you guys have a question as the slide comes up, yeah, feel, free, um, yeah. feel free to ask. Yeah. Um, we might not know the answer, but we'll do our right. best. Like yeah. I said, we're not chicken professionals. It's just a hobby. Yeah, okay. a hobby. Yes. Yeah. So do you want to go first? Sure, sure. So um, you all are here because you have some interest in potentially raising chickens. You might have chickens and want to know a little bit more about raising chickens. Uh, our program tonight is mostly going to be about why raise chickens for egg laying or for like if you have to be in like 4-H or you want to show chickens. So this is mostly for those purposes, um, not for meat chickens. So why would you want to raise chickens? Raising chickens is fun. Chickens are very entertaining. They're beautiful. Uh, they have their own personalities. Um, they're fun. It's a very pretty kind of a low maintenance hobby. It's they're pretty inexpensive. Um, they are also, like I said, entertaining. Uh, they can be good for your garden. Um, they can be good like for your home. They consume scraps. If you want to get to be very minimalistic, uh, having chickens and other animals for hobbies also provides a way to get rid of food scraps um, and yard scraps. It's good for the planet. And I we raise chickens primarily because the eggs are far better than what you can buy in the store. Um, and when you feed them things that you are already eating, your eggs have a taste. Um, and so they're much better tasting. And if you raise meat birds, um, it's very hard to not continue to raise meat birds. So that's kind of why raise, raise chickens. Okay, so the presentation, we'll just have a, our overviews. We're gonna talk about housing and equipment, how to start chicks, and then keeping your chickens safe and healthy. My favorite book for uh, kind of what I call the chicken Bible is the story's guide to raising chickens. And it's just one I own. And then if I have a question or wanna look something up, I have it handy on the shelf. We also have a copy in the library. Yeah. Okay, so can you raise chickens where you live? This is an important question. So um, even if you live in the country um, or if you live in a city, town, or village, make sure that where you live, your land is zoned for that it's okay to have chickens. Um, I know uh, if your land is zoned R20 in Pierce County, you're probably not supposed to have chickens. And if you live in a certain city or village, you may or may not be able to have chickens. Um, and also it's always a good idea to ask your neighbors if having chickens is okay, um, especially if you're gonna have a rooster because the rooster will wake you up at the crack of dawn. Okay. All right. So meat birds are dual purpose layers. So that's kind of what uh, we got into. So um, meat birds in general are bred to grow fast and they can be butchered between six and eight weeks, sometimes depending on the breeds, even at five weeks. Um, and it also depends on if you keep them inside or let them out. Um, 
And then it also depends if you're raising them for other people. Uh, when we raised them, we had birds that got really big. And so um, sometimes people don't want like the eight pound chicken. Uh, so it just all depends, but they're anywhere between five and six to eight weeks. Um, and um, you can butcher uh, dual purpose and layer breeds for meat, but it will take at least 12 weeks um, and the meat will be different than other bird breeds. So um, dual purpose, if you want, it's just a different, they don't eat and consume in such a short period of time to get larger. Um, slowing or fancy breeds are another reason to raise chickens, but will not we're, we're not going to really go over that no. show chickens or sometimes yeah. people raise them for 4-H. Yep. Um, they try to get a male and a female pair that look pretty together, but we're not going to go over that. That's a whole different science. Yeah. Yeah. I have yep. kids that have shown them at the fair and, and it gets into a whole different purpose there. You end up learning how to give a chicken a bath and <laughs> all kinds of things you never, ever thought in your whole life you'd be doing. And it's kind of entertaining. Um, so there are dozens and dozens of layer breeds um, and dual purpose breeds with various pros and cons and different egg colors um, and egg sizes. Um, so all of these things are something that you want to consider before you start your flock. Um, and there are a lot of resources. There are physical catalogs still, and there's also um, stores in our area feed stores that do have chick days, which are going on, I think uh, right now, it's usually this first couple weeks in April, um, where you can buy live chicks um, and you can order them and they do come in the mail alive. Uh, one interesting little side note is that with the dual purpose chickens or the layers, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, that would be the chicken most people ate. And mm -hmm. so then it's kind of a whole big story about how somebody accidentally got a whole bunch of roosters instead of hens and then butchered the roosters and realized, hey, I could make a lot of money doing that. And then they were kind of like bread just for meat production. But our great grandparents would have eaten much different chicken. Back oh, yeah. In the day. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So we're focusing mostly on egg laying. Egg laying. Yep. Egg laying birds yep. today. So. Yeah. Meat. Meat birds would be a whole nother presentation. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. So um, for equipment, basically you need some sort of shelter. And when you get the shelter, you're going to consider, is it for laying hens or meat birds? Do you want to have them be free ranged or enclosed? And then you have to have some way of providing food and water for them. Um, so with shelter, it can go from as complex as you want to make it to super simple. I mean, you could repurpose basically anything that keeps the wind and the rain away from them. Um, you can build things, you can buy things. Um, they have to, it has to provide some sort of safety from predators. So chickens will go in at night and there's always creatures that want to eat your chickens in the evening. So they need to be safe in there. Um, you can have it so you can move it around or it can be fixed, you know, like a little building. And it has to be easy to clean. You see a lot of them that are kind of cute and little and yeah. they have these little tiny doors, but then you're going to have to like lean in there and scoop out the stuff. Yeah. And we've had at our house, we've had every kind of thing. Um, we've made them out of sheds. We've made them out of uh, like dog kennels. Um, and then we bought the ones that you see at like the commercial stores. And like Kim said, they appear to be easy to clean. Like one will have like, it's a tray that slides out and that seems easy to clean, but they're not constructed out of really good wood. So those trays get stuck. So then it becomes hard to clean it. Um, and, and then it's also hard to get inside of those little things to like get your feed and water in good spaces. And you also you know, it works really well to have the feed hanging um, or mounted on the outside of a cage um, or a fence. And so those smaller ones are really hard to do things like that. But they're great for backyards if you want just a couple birds. So what what sort of children do you have? Oh, we have we have some pictures. So pictures. We'll get yeah. into that. Yeah. 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 So the other things to think about is um, 
just the coop design, space requirements. You should have X amount of space per bird. Uh, temperature con control and ventilation. You don't want it to get too hot or too cold. Um, uh, flooring and bedding. So you, you're going to have to have some sort of floor for them. It can be dirt. It can be concrete. Um, but you usually want to put down some sort of bedding. Um, you're going to probably want to build a roost in there. And then you might are going to have some sort of yard and fencing for them usually. So if you're sheltering meat birds versus layers, the meat birds don't need as much outside time. And in fact, they probably should move as little as possible, but yet still have a nice life. But they're not going to want to, you know, run from here to across the room. They're just going to want to kind of go outside and do their little thing. Um, Whereas if you have layers or dual purpose birds, pretty much I think the more room they have, the better. Mm -hmm. um, and layers are going to need a place to roost and a place to lay their eggs. And they really benefit from being outside. Mm -hmm. um, when I have my meat birds there in the smaller part, I lucked out and my husband's grandparents raised chickens. So we had a whole building that's the size of a small garage dedicated to them. And so one half is for the layers and then a quarter is where we keep the meat birds. And then they have a little tiny run. That's probably no bigger than like 12 by 12 um, for the meat birds. But the other birds, it's pretty big, about probably 20 by 30. They have a pretty big run. Okay, so here's some examples of shelters. These are not ours. These Look are how fancy they are. Yeah, those are fancy. <laughs> you can buy them from. I just picked Tractor Supply at random. Yeah. Um, because they had they're a, one of the more close by places in Prescott. So you can spend as much money as you want on a chicken shelter. Um, and it can be as fancy or as plain as possible. Um. You know, here's some ones that people made themselves. I've always kind of liked the idea of repurposing the an truck old truck topper, topper mm -hmm. you know, because once your truck dies, you're stuck with the topper and what do you do with it? So you might as well make it into a chicken coop. I actually had one that was a goat shelter for a while. Yeah. So, and it worked great. Um, so, you know, really simple designs that people have online. There's hundreds, if not thousands of options you can find online. Um movable versus fixed um there's kind of an idea where you move your shelter around and then the chickens can kind of pick through the grass and the bugs um the only thing with any of these movable shelters or shelters you buy is you want to make sure they're not going to blow away in a storm yeah so like you're going to have some way of fixing them down um because even in my little chicken run i had a little lean-to that i mean it takes like three strong people to move it. And that one year we had that tornado in December, it actually lifted itself up off the blocks, and <laughs> destroyed my other little lean to. So yeah. kind of keep storms in mind if you buy them or have movable ones. And if you hurt, if you search online, what those come up as is chicken tractors um, is another term right now used for those. So chicken tractors, literally I have one, to give away you have to come and get it it's really really nice um it is um it's got wheels it's got an outside thing it's got um the like the fencing with chicken wire on it and you can just pick it up move it around in the winter it's got a big heavy duty cord you can plug it in so it's insulated it's really nice so those are chicken tractors um that are on wheels when i have on wheels those don't have the front one the white one does have wheels, so that would be a chicken tractor. Um, so, and it's nice, they will kill your grass. Uh, so if you keep it in one spot, you know, the grass will die. They'll get it down to the dirt. Is that a straight duck? Yes, those are some ducks on the right. I've also had ducks. Okay, so these are Heather's coops. Um, yeah. These do I don't we don't use these ones anymore. So I'll tell you a little bit about them. So on the left, you'll see that one we bought at a store in the area, um, and because it's nice to have a run, um, I'm actually going to stand up for a second as I show. Them. So this one here. So we bought this at Fleet Farm. That part. And that's the kind that's oh easy to clean. It's got trays. Those trays they can become immovable. 
And so we built a little run. It's super simple. All you see is like two by fours and some, and then we moved that one around. Um, and then right behind it, you'll see that shed with like three little holes in it, repurposing things. Kim talked about goats. Uh, we used to have um, dogs for hunting, and that was actually a dog cow. And so there were the runs, and the whole floor was cement. And then we had we found on Facebook marketplace and dog panel, uh, and panels, and so that's what was there. So we actually uh, we we gave away that one. The dog run, somebody came and loaded it up with two skid loaders, and they hauled that thing away. It was like cement on bottle, this big. We just gave that away. The one in the background, that's what I'm talking about, is a chicken tractor. See, it's got wheels. It's got the outdoor, or outdoor thing. These doors are big enough that you can actually get inside. There's a ramp. You can close it up in the winter if it's cold. And well, I'll give it away. You can be the first person who wants it, and you'll have to come pick it up. So it's very nice. Okay, so then the other thing to keep in mind of is, do you want to have them be free ranged or do you want them enclosed? Um, I believe you should keep them enclosed. Lots of people have them free range. People in my neighborhood have them running around the neighborhood. Some people have a run like I do. Um, it is nice when they free range because they can get more bugs, they can get grass, um, they won't kill the one spot they're in, but they will always be in danger of predators. Um, so hawks will get them, coyotes, stray dogs, they might get hit by cars if they go on the road, but you know, it's whatever you want to do. If you want to have them free range, fine. If you want to have them enclosed, just make sure that you have the minimum space requirements if they're going to be enclosed. Are they going to roost at night? Yeah, so if they're if they're free range, they might roost in trees or outbuildings. Um, whereas Train them to like they roost inside. If they don't have anywhere else to go, they'll come inside. Yeah. But they might just go wherever they feel like it too. Yeah. And usually when it starts getting dusk, their instincts, if they do have a place to go into, they'll they'll go inside. Yeah. And they'll want to go into their place they're used to going. Yep. All right, so here's Heather's chicken runs, and you can see they have lots of room to run around, and they yeah. haven't killed your grass yet. Well, that was early on. Uh, it takes a little while for the grass to grow back. Um, so we have our uh, calf barn on the left, and then the other barn right there, um, the whole one quarter is a big indoor chicken coop um on the other side is where we have our meat birds so um there's cattle right next to them and then there's a little door that we made and they just go in and out um we don't have any netting on top um when we had the smaller ones in the yard we did but this is what kim and i talked about is when you have them um somewhere their biggest predators are um hawks and owls things like that and to be able to catch a chicken those birds need to swoop and pluck it up and leave they don't land so they're not gonna perch on the edge of that jump down get it and leave and so things like this are nice where they cannot come in and get it and leave uh, and we have cats and they'll just go in there with them you know chickens are pretty fast so I've got one cat who thinks she's a chicken. She yeah. hangs out with the chickens all the time. Yeah. So, you know, when it's really, really cold, we'll shut that little door. But otherwise, it's open all year round. Okay. So for space requirements, um, uh, you know, it kind of depends on what you're going to have the, you know, look it up i think it's x amount of feet per bird yeah. but the more the better um the healthier the flock access to outside is always better than being stuck in a building because we like going outside chickens mm -hmm. like going outside and um if they only roost at night and they're outside the rest of the time it's okay to have a little bit smaller chicken coop but here in the northland it gets pretty cold, so there are going to be some days where they're just going to want to stay inside. Although, oddly enough, on my chicken building, we used to have an outdoor roost, and um, 
it could be like 10 below and the chickens would want to roost out there. They just liked being outside. So it actually just kind of fell apart and we took it off and now they have to roost inside but it always made me nervous when they were out there and it was super cold you do have to worry about them like with the space and the that it because it is cold like if you do show birds and you want to show anything um like with a comb they will freeze and you'll get knocked down on that and um and so they're they will freeze uh they'll they're freeze their toes will freeze off um, so despite the fact that they like being outside, you do have to manage the care for them, um, when it's really cold because they're just like kids, they'll just stay outside and play. Um, so, oh. yeah. So if it's bitter, bitter cold or awful weather, I just, I don't even let them out. Yeah. Great yeah there's hardier yeah. breeds yep so when you there's the mediterranean breeds that are kind of geared more towards warmer weather and then there's the party breeds uh barred rocks rhode island reds a lot of them that mm-hmm. were developed in uh america are better for cold mm-hmm. weather so i usually get the cold weather breeds um so temperature control and ventilation um so adult chickens kind of like to be like we like to be 70 to 75 um too hot is worse than too cold for chickens so they actually kind of seem to suffer more when it's really hot in the summertime um they actually kind of do this thing where they put their little wings out Mm -hmm. and they pant like dogs and so then you kind of know they're too hot um so you know, you're probably not going to put air conditioning into your chicken coop, but I'll often put a fan just to keep the air circulating. And it's really important for them to have shade when it's hot, just like people. Um, adequate ventilation, so you don't want it um, too stuffy in there, especially in the summertime. So um, I have a couple of windows that I can open and close. Well, actually, it's such an old building. I take off old windows and put them on the old windows. Yep. And then it just has screen stapled to the, the window open, openings. And then they really like shade, you know, just somewhere when they're outside that they can get into some shade. Um, even if you have to build a little lean-to structure or put up a tarp for them. Um, and again, consider a heavy, hardy breed for winter. Or, you know, prepare to use heat lamps if you get kind of the more Mediterranean breeds. Was it kind of from standing water at all? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, they don't go into the water to get no. cool. But they, they, drink you know, they'll they drink it. Mm-hmm. So if it's really hot out, we might give them fresh water two or three times a day just so they have fresh cold water. Um, and then another thing to think about, like, with shade, you don't have to buy anything fancy. Like, we have had, like, lawn chairs that kind of have a broken leg or something like that um we have deer stands and the like they're not being used and so we'll take the ladders off them chickens love ladders uh we you can get free spools from pierce pepin uh those wooden ones so they love those we'll put those out in our coop and then you just put a ladder off of them um i have in there it's half of a like a culvert and and they love that. I mean, but any kind of shade, it can be anything that you're not using anymore. Old tables, they're they're like kids. They like stuff to climb on. They like things to hide under. Um, you know, it's it's kind of fun to see what they actually interact with. But so in your coop, you'll need um, some sort of flooring and some sort of bedding. So uh, for flooring. You know, you can get wood shavings at a farm store. You can use straw, but you want to make sure the straw isn't moldy. Um, It's kind of, you know, whatever is usually the most inexpensive and easiest to clean. For whatever reason, one year I had a whole bunch of straw from the neighbors and I used that instead of wood shavings and it was really difficult to clean in the spring. That's all we use. Yeah, but we live on a farm. But so Heather has tons of straw, so she uses straw. But I found the wood shavings were the easiest to clean up and um, then I can put them in my compost and they make, you know, dirt yeah. for the next year. But if you have straw, use yeah, straw. We use, our setup is really kind of nice. We have barn and just open up we built it with these doors that open on to the inside and our barn cleaner does it's not a functioning one right now so but it's right at the end so whenever we clean the end of the barn with the cattle then we clean the chicken coop and just throw it in there and spread it on the field so 
Yeah, my it's what we have. floor is concrete. Yeah. Um, so I put down the wood shavings and then I just clean it up with a shovel. Um, sort of the dreaded two or three time of year job, which is, you know, you're going to have to work that in. I would not do it on a 90 degree day. And you don't want to do it when the ground is when it's frozen because it's really hard to clean up. So, you know, save those for the 50 degree day cleanup projects. Yeah. Um, and if you have allergies or, um, you know, birds carry disease and things like that. So whenever we clean our coop, we wear masks just so we're not breathing in like dry chicken poop. You know, yeah. that's not a good thing to breathe in. So if you're cleaning it out, like if you have a large coop, that's what we like. We wear masks. If, um, if you have smaller coops, no big deal. Those are not that big, but our coop is big. Yeah. How often do you clean? How often do you clean up when you Oh, when it needs to be cleaned. I'm sorry. When it needs to be cleaned. Yeah. <laughs> kind of depends. We usually yeah. do it three or four times a year, depending. So in the summer, you can pretty much go, I can go like the whole summer and not have to clean the inside because they are mostly outside. Mm -hmm. But so then I think I've cleaned it once this winter when we had a warm day and then I'll clean it again probably on the next warm day. So I usually end up doing it three times a year, depending. But then if I have my little area with the meat birds or I have my little area with the chicks, that's going to get dirty mm -hmm. quicker because um, they're in a smaller area and um, it's just going to build up faster. So then that might get cleaned, especially for chicks. You're cleaning it almost every day. Yeah. So, meat birds is daily. Yeah. And it is, as they get bigger, I mean, they're built, to just eat and so when all they do is eat you can imagine what happens and um you know generally you aren't raising meat birds in the winter because most places around here do not manage meat birds when it's not warm so it's just um it gets really really messy with meat birds so yeah, yeah. cleaning and, just depends on yeah what you're raising yep. and probably we could have talked about it later but since we brought up the the masks um usually too you want to have your your chicken cleaning clothes that you only wear on your own farm um like your own boots and yeah. your own shoes yeah. so i would not want to go over to heather's yeah. in my stuff unless i sanitized it in case my birds had some sort of disease that mm -hmm. they are you know sort of somewhat immune to but I could introduce it into Heather's birds yeah. and vice versa. Yeah. We have a neighbor who has a barn with chickens and his are mostly just for show and eggs. Um, and uh, when my kids feed their chickens, they wear boot covers. Can yeah. I ask a quick question about um, the composting? Yeah. Does, does it, we need to dry for once you can cook the particles in the compost or? When you put it in your garden, it gets a bit It's too hot. Yeah. Yeah. So you can, so sometimes we'll put it in the garden really um, thinly in the fall and it should be okay by spring. But if it's too thick, I just put it in my compost and then it'll be like the, you know, how when you compost, you have your green and you have your brown, brown being like leaves or wood shavings it'll be the brown and then after a year or so it won't be too hot to um i don't know what nitrogen or yeah i don't have experience with that because all of our waste goes on our fields like we spread it with a manure spreader Thanks. so i i don't know yeah i mine seems to be made into compost in about a year so we have two compost bins and we try to trade off where we put the the chicken shavings and then all our household scraps. So it kind of makes those layers. Okay, so roosts, again, if you have um, hens, they like to roost, or even if you have roosters, they're gonna roost. And you can, you know, I made that out of old cement blocks, some one by fours and branches you know it was just stuff i had laying around so it doesn't have any have to be anything fancy um they like wood they especially like branches they don't really like so much like plastic or metal that is too slippery yeah so you just kind of make whatever you want um for the longest time i had one that was just sort of flat a little bit off off the ground i could push it up so i could 
clean underneath. That will be where your concentrated chicken poop is, is mm-hmm. underneath the roost. Yeah. Um, and then now I have one that's against the wall and, you know, you can just go underneath there and clean it. That, that one in the picture there just kind of, I gave up the ghost after about 20 years. Yeah. Ours, our, our chickens, ours, we have, so we bought, um, new roosts or new, um, nesting boxes and when you if you buy them they usually come with nesting like roosting bars on them um and they really like those um and then we also ours is in our barn we're no longer a dairy barn and so we've got pipe in there and they love that but it's not slippery it's um and they also you're gonna get one that's gonna roost on top of the water always or the feed um so the more things that you have to not be on top of your food and your water the better um because then it wastes your food and water but there's always going to be one chicken that has to do that yeah i don't even have that kind of water in it inside anymore i just use a pan yeah because i'm so tired of cleaning off the waterer yeah Okay, so food and water, um, you can buy or make your own feed. Heather lives on a farm, so they grind their feed. I don't have crops, so we just buy the feed at the feed store. We try to buy organic, but you don't have to. And then um, depending on the, their different life stages is the type of food you're going to buy. So there's, you know, chick feed. Yeah. Then there's kind of like a little bit older, like not baby feed. And then it's meat bird or lay a ration at a certain point. And I can never remember exactly when we're supposed to switch up, so I always just look in the book. Um, I try to just buy the amount, and then, well, if it's a week early or a week late and I'm out of food, I just move them on to the next thing. Yep. If you're raising chickens, like a thousand of them, you know, you're going to probably have it down to a science where it's like the very day would yeah. have the exact amount, but we're just doing this for fun. Um they do like scratch grains, so I kind of throw them the scratch grains out in the yard, and they like that. That's just a kind of a normal chicken instinct, but you don't have to get scratch grains. It's kind of like candy for kids. Yeah, You don't yeah. want to feed them too much. Um, you can give them food scraps if safe and, and weeds, and Heather has yeah. a whole thing on that. Um, they need grit to digest their food. So we buy a grit that does two things. It's calcium and grit. Mm -hmm. And so um, in their gizzard, that's kind of where they grind their food before it goes into their stomachs. Um, And calcium, if you have egg layers, they need to have a source of calcium or their um, shells will be on the thin side. Um, You're going to have to have some sort of heated water for winter um, or you're going to be going out there like three times a day, giving them new water. So um, what I do is you can just buy a a heated pan and then you can put a metal, whatever you want on top of that to keep the water warm. You can also buy ones where like they're plasticky and the the bottom is heated. Mm -hmm. Um, But I, those you kind of have to like tip upside down and they're just a little bit harder for me to manage. So I like the heated pans better. Um, And you want to have Lots of fresh water. That's kind of the most important thing is to make sure they always have fresh water. So we give them water every day, dump it out at night, give them fresh water every morning. Um, And you have to keep your food and water containers clean. Um, Could I keep them cleaner? Yes, everybody could. But, you know, I try to give them a good cleaning two times a year. But if they get yucky, of course you clean them. Yeah, if they get green, yeah, obviously bleach them out. Yeah. Yeah. Things like that. Do you want to talk about the food safety? Oh, yeah. So that's next. Okay. All right. So one of the really great things about um, having chickens is what I talk. um, Environmentally, it's a really nice thing to be able to have a place for your scraps to go. And there is a sheet over by the coffee that has like a a list of this. and so i am constantly you know my kids will get some kind of new fruit or vegetable you know tiktok says oh they'll eat this you know like and then i'm googling like can chickens eat this you know um and so uh there's a lot of stuff they can eat there's a lot of stuff they can't eat there's a lot of stuff they can eat maybe 
if you live in the country versus if you live in town, like if you have a lawn that is beautiful and sprayed versus us in the country, we don't spray our lawn. So there's a lot of stuff that um, you just have to read the fine print. Um, but there are some really common foods that chickens absolutely cannot eat. Um, raw potato peels. And when I say you can't eat them, they'll, they'll literally kill your chickens. Um, some of the things that you feed them have to be in moderation because of like how they digest them and um, what happens to them over time if they eat too much of it. So raw potato peels, citrus fruits, uncooked rice same reason people don't throw rice at weddings anymore it goes in their stomach and just expands um onion some people feed their chickens onions um like i you change the flavor well my father-in-law who has he's raised chicken since he was a small boy and his mom and grandma they had a he will tell you oh that person put fed their chicken onion but you can taste what goes what your chickens are eating to some extent you can tell by the color of the yolk um different things like that if you're allergic to things um you can manage their food so that you're not going to be eating that like i can't eat corn um and corn is part of what we feed our chickens but it's not like it's ground up in their feed and it's not a huge part of their feed so i can eat our eggs right eat somebody else's eggs no, it's not always great um garlic is not something to feed chickens um avocado is one of those like i actually do we'll give our chickens some avocado but they can't have the skin or the pit it's one of those like sometimes you have to say no you cannot feed this because there are parts of things that are toxic um green potatoes uncooked pasta cherry pits um so some of the things on there like um uh Kidney beans is on there as one. If it's cooked, you can give them the cooked beans, but not dry beans. Um, never dry rice. Um, and avocado pits and skins are dangerous. Um, parts of the plant contain like different toxins. So there's just some things that are parts of it are okay and other parts are not Um Raw eggs. So you will inevitably have you break an egg in your coop, and the chickens think it's amazing. And then you get egg eaters, and they will literally crack open your eggs, and you got a big problem. Um, so it's not that they're toxic to chickens, it's your chickens will just then start eating all of your eggs. Um, so you got to make sure to collect your eggs. And if you find that there's a chicken that is eating the eggs, well, then you have to manage that chicken. Um, so sometimes adding things to the diet to increase the strength of the eggs will help so that they don't get broken. Um, things like that. No apple seeds, chocolate. Um, they shouldn't eat moldy food. Sometimes people are like, oh, I got a moldy moldy tomato i'm going to give it to the chickens well that's not healthy for them to eat moldy things um tomatoes are fine and great for chickens the leaves of tomatoes and eggplants are toxic um not onions uh no coffee grounds or tea bags um don't give them anything that isn't good for you um like fried things, salty treats, sweet desserts. Um, you know, there's certain things that just are, don't make sense for a chicken to eat. Um, nothing sprayed with chemicals. So um, when you say like grass clippings, don't feed them grass clippings, don't feed them this. Well, if you spray your lawn, you're giving your chicken something toxic. Grass clippings in moderation are great. Um, when we mow our lawn, sometimes we just throw the whole thing in there and they go, they love it, but we don't spray our lawn and we don't have neighbors who spray their lawn because if you live in town and your neighbor sprays, it's going to blow onto your yard. Um, and same with your plants in your garden, you know, like, so you just have to be careful. Um, they shouldn't eat asparagus, lettuce in large quantities, never rhubarb, never rhubarb leaves, horseradish, amaranth, um, butter. So 
people like sometimes think, oh, I'll give them the cob. It's the corn that we ate corn on the cob if it's got butter. Don't give them those. Um, cherry pits, raw chicken. Um, they don't need to eat meat because they can get salmonella as well. Um, green potatoes, salt, garlic. Um, I don't even know why this is on here, but they don't drink juice or soda. Um, <laughs> alcohol chickens don't don't give them alcohol. I don't know. These things get created because clearly somebody's done it. Um, don't give them chips. Don't give them pretzels. Uncooked pasta. Um, the lawn clippings. That's um where it comes in. You know, like if it's sprayed, don't give them that. Um, not toads. Chicken. Um, the toads have um they can have toxins on their skin worms great um if you have a chicken out in the yard and there's a snake they'll go eat that snake um uh not acorns um, mushrooms is one of those other things like um some mushrooms are toxic so you know it's one of those things like it's not recommended um xylitol um which is in sweeteners don't give them artificial sweeteners. Again, I don't know why, but these things make a list. Periwinkle, taro, ivy. So some of the things are in your garden is where it gets um, complicated. You know, don't just like clip everything from your garden and throw it in there. Um, generally, chickens won't eat what's bad for them, but that won't, doesn't mean that they won't eat it. Ivy, hydrangeas, hyacinth, uh, ferns, um, castor beans, Lantana, apricot plants, um, green tomatoes in large quantities, oak, tulips, kumquats, ferns, um, irises, eucalyptus, elderberries, um, Queen Anne's lace, jasmine is might upset your chicken stomachs, daffodils are toxic, foxglove is highly toxic, honeysuckle can be harmful. Hemlock, that'll kill chickens. Deadly nightshade lives up to its name. Holly is harmful. Rhododendrons are common and dangerous. They can't eat um, banana peels, peach pits, raw meat, french fries, maple leaves, ice cream, goat feed, and pickles. So if you have a question about what not to feed your chicken, just Google it. You'll find it. It's out there. Things that are great. Um, what is safe? Alfalfa sprouts, endive, lettuce in small quantities, spinach, Swiss chard, carrots, beets, corn, turnips, sweet potatoes. So when it says no potatoes, sweet potatoes are great. Like I just had a whole pile of them you know, that we gave them. Uh, a squash. Uh, when I talk about some of the stuff, like broccoli, cabbage, and Brussels sprouts are good in moderation, um, but they contain goitrochins, um, which can interfere with their thyroid's gland ability to function. Um, so, um, there, so there are different things that chickens like and are tasty and they can't stop. In general, most fruits are good. Um, you can generally feed them what you want for fruit, except apple seeds and cherry pits and um, pits are not good, but they can eat like pumpkin seeds and squash, grapes, tomatoes, um, pomegranates, all those other things. Other plants and weeds. So weeds are a good thing to get rid of with chickens. If you're weeding your garden, nettles, purslane, parsley, chickweed, dandelions. They love dandelions. Clover, plantain, grass and gla grass clippings if your lawn is not sprayed. Um, they do like oatmeal. Bread, um, toasted bread, stale bread, um, crickets, yogurt, sunflower seeds, sprouts, um, you know. So there's other things. It's just if you don't know, so and that next slide, um, you know, just a simple Google search. And this one just kind of assumes, um, you know, it talks about um, don't assume it's good for them. It's one of those, um, it's better to ask permission than forgiveness because the forgiveness might be that your chicken died because uh, you gave them the wrong thing. Um, just a simple Google search is blah, 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 safe to feed chickens. And, and it's so easy to find out what you can and can't feed them. Um, there's a lot of resources out there.
Um, so the this list that I got, I liked it. They created it back in 2016 and they updated it just um, in July of 2023. Um, and so that one is the homesteadinghippie.com. So it's printable, but I did, there's that handy little list there. Sweet potatoes be cooked before you give it to No, mm -mm. like I made sweet potatoes for Easter and gave them the peelings and carrots. Oh yeah. Yeah, they like carrots. Yep. Yeah. All right, so uh, chickens, if if you can, it's nice to give them some light. They do better with red lights. Um, there's just something that, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, especially like when they're little, um, the red lights, if they see blood on each other because they like peck each other, or get injured, for some reason the red light makes them not see it as well and then they don't peck each other as much. So yeah. if you do get a light, buy a red light for them. Um, uh, usually they need 14 to 16 hours of light to lay eggs. So they'll usually decrease their egg production in the fall as it gets darker. It's just their natural cycle. You can wait till spring for them to pick up production. Um, lots of times I'll kind of let them go through their slowdown period. They'll usually molt where they lose their feathers and grow new feathers. And then say January, I'll put a light on them and gradually increase it. So then they'll start laying eggs again. Um, if you're a commercial egg yeah. person, you know, you're going to have that down to the science. And yeah. for me, it's just sort of like, well, turn the light on in the morning when I go to take care of them, turn it off when I go to lock up the coop. Um, they can have too much light. So if they have more than 17 hours, that can stop egg production. So you kind of just want to, you can put it on a timer or yeah. kind of keep track of the time of day you go down there. Yeah, we put ours on a timer. And then we forgot to turn ours on. And so we were without eggs for quite some time. And then um, and then now they, they it takes a while to kind of come back to producing. So oh, I wanted to go back that one slide if you want to go back to the one. Um, one thing that I do um, that I think is really great. So under our sink, we've got our indoor compost and we've got the compost behind our house. Um, and then we've got in our fridge, we keep a bowl like it's a Tupperware container. And whenever we're cutting up things that can go to the chickens, we keep it in there and we keep it in the fridge so it doesn't go moldy. Cause if you put it in your compost under the sink, so that's the stuff that can't be fed to chickens. So that's like onion peels, um, potato peels, um, things like that, eggshells, you know, we compost that stuff and the rest of it goes to the chickens and we keep it in the fridge and then bring it down and throw it into them and they are so happy. So. Okay, so if you're going to start your flock, there's really three options. You can buy day-old chicks or very young chicks um, at, a, at a farm store. Um, you can order them through the mail, like from Murray McMurray, Hoover's. You can buy them at Tractor Supply, Runnings, et cetera. You can buy some birds where somebody has raised them just to where they're going to start laying, or you can buy mature birds, which is usually only people do that if they're going to do show birds mm -hmm. um, or some sort of fancy bird. I've always just gotten my little day old chicks. Um, so when you get your chicks, um, you need to kind of set up a little brooder area for them. Um, so the best thing, if you can get your hands on it, is an old water tub mm -hmm. that you know, from a farmer where it has a leak on it or it cracked. It can yep. be plastic, it can be metal, but that's like the perfect chick starter because little baby chicks need a rounded area. So if they're in a square area, like a big box, you would think, oh, that would be perfect. Well, they're gonna pile up in the corner and then they smother each other. So for some reason, they, they need a little rounded area. Um, and that's like the best thing, but you can you can just make it out of cardboard. Um, is probably the best way to do it. Oh yeah, some cardboard you can burn or throw away. You're definitely not going to recycle it when no. you're done. No, um, and it needs to be protected and free of drafts. And you will definitely need heat lights when you have your little baby chicks because you need to keep them at a certain temperature. Um, and you need to when you get them always keep an eye out for disease. And they get this little problem called pasty butt where their poop just sort of like 
piles up on their butt and you just have to gently clean it off mm -hmm. and you just have to kind of watch them it, you know you don't get baby chicks and then go on vacation you have to be home with them for probably the first month yeah oh gosh yeah 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 and then the heat as they grow you have to raise it because you can't have it be too hot yep and you'll so, notice that it's too far down when they start moving away from the light yep so this is a ex couple examples at my my chicken coop so i had an old plastic water tub that was a good place to start them in um and then on the other side there you can see i have the meat birds on one side and the laying hens on the other side and i've just used cardboard to make little rounded areas and you don't want to have the meat birds with the laying hen birds because you have to have to take the feed away from the meat birds at yeah. night where the laying hens can kind of just eat whatever they feel like it because the meat birds will eat themselves to death so you have to just really be careful not to overfeed them yeah and it's it happens really quickly they're just little eating machines it's kind of actually scary yeah and it, they'll stop being able to walk yeah yeah so then you have to have heat and light for them so you he have a heat light that you can raise up and down i just put mine on a piece of wire just you know plain old farm wire that it, has been laying around on the farm you could buy a chain you know like a nice chain we use um rope no we don't use rope we just use the like what we have on our hand straw bales so oh you just use twine. like that oh just twine yeah yeah um and so you, they need to start out when they're just out of the the box if you get them they have to be at 95 degrees and then kind of the rule of thumb is less five degrees every week so then the second week is 90 the third week is 85 you know 80. um i've had them where if i get them later in the year you don't need much light on them because it's warmer but then i've also gotten them when it's been so cold i've had to put them in the basement to keep them warm yeah. just because it was so darn cold like you know you can have a cold snap in the end of april or may and you just you know, you know, you just want your little baby chicks to stay warm. Yep. And you have to have a thermometer to keep track of it. You can kind of tell because they'll either be mm -hmm. too close to the light or too far away. Yeah. But it's, you know, I usually just have an old thermometer in there. And you have to really kind of keep a track of it during the first month. Is that when you use a red light? Yeah, and you use a red light. Yep, that's when you use a red light. All my lights are red, but they probably just look brighter yep. in the yep. pictures. Um, so then um, when you first get them, you use newspaper mm -hmm. for the first, like, maybe week or so um, because they will eat the the litter. They think yeah. the litter is food. And so then they get used to using their food and water. And, again, you're cleaning it and checking on it, like, two, three times a day just to be on the safe side. Um, and you don't ever want the litter and the paper to get too wet. So you're kind of mm -hmm. cleaning and scooping and really, you know, it's kind of a – involved process when you first get them like a mother hen. yes like they, a mother hen they eat yeah. a lot of food they drink yep. a lot of water yep yep yeah so they'll come you know and this is how they've arrived in the mail there's you know one box i think that was all meat birds i got that one yep. time and then another time i must have had uh, a couple different breeds and they were all separated out so if you go to the post office yeah. around springtime they'll have you will hear them in the back and it's pretty funny. It's you know it. When should we start? Oh well, you know you can pretty soon. Pretty soon. Chick days is really? going on. Yeah. So. Yeah. So here's some pictures of them. You know when they're really little. I have little waterers, and then the waterers get bigger. You have little feeders, and I actually will raise them up on little pieces of wood. You know, just wood uh, board scraps. There's one time uh, they must have been really cold, so I made a big uh cardboard enclosure for them um you can see the cute little chicks they're just very cute when they're little like that and we actually sit in the chicken coop with lawn chairs and watch them for hours oh, yeah. they're so entertaining they like run around and then they lay down and take a nap and then they get up and they run around they're yeah, and if they you make them little obstacles they're super cute um, and then I have, this is a whole different discussion, but I have had a couple of hens go broody over the years and, um, I'll just let them hatch out a batch of eggs and then I don't have to do any work other yeah. than give them food and water. Cause then the mama keeps them at the right temperature. So 
But the only problem is, is then my flock kind of gets all heltery skeltery. Yeah. I don't know what I have. Yeah. But it's, it is a fun way to do it. We tried it once. It's, it's, seems like it should be easy. It's like, hey, you lay eggs and just sit on these. And no, it's been a couple never, of good mamas. Never been successful. Okay. So here's some pictures of, of yeah. how Heather raises them. These are ours. So you can see, like, we have lots of these old watering tanks. Um, and then the nice thing for us is um, when you have the sturdy metal ones like that, um, you can actually just clip your heat lamps on the side. And so we do that as they get a little bigger. Um, and then we have um, a two of those great big wooden ones as they get bigger because you can't keep them in those containers like they get too big um and so then they go into that type of enclosure and the thing comes up that, that was actually made for pheasants um raising pheasants and it works out great for chickens or kittens that we want to like take out the barn and have as cats pets you know and then that that picture on the on the far um on right here yeah this is also when you have that little mesh on top of there yeah. that's also really handy for keeping predators slash your curious cats yes. away from the baby chicks because yeah. um my cat i have right now was quite interested in the baby chicks and yeah. so i had to rig up something like that to keep them out yeah we have old window screens so for the other ones but we have ours in our old milk house with our rabbits so they don't need to be protected in there from any kind of predator but in the big barn when we put those out yes you do want some kind of top on you can take we have old windows yeah old window, window screens. screens are perfect and yep. you can cut a hole if you're putting a heat lamp on top of those you need to cut a hole or it'll melt the screen so make sure you're safe with whatever kind of material you have on top. All right, some more Heather's. Yeah, tricks. so this is um, the inside of our inside coop. So we built, um, I should not say we, I did not build this. Um, my husband and my girls did, but on the left-hand side, those um, there's like a series of those screen panels and they're on hinges. So to clean it, you just put them all outside and um, you just, open up um if you can see it like you just open these these up and they prop up and they just clean everything out you can see we've got these little roofs um and then we've got the lamp hanging from the ceiling they're on timers and it's really easy to clean i get the cement floor and we do put down straw um and then my kids i mean honestly he can make roofs out of a stick you know, my kids have made those, you know, they're just blocks and sticks. There's a purchase one. And then you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see, like, there's the middle of the barn. Um, and on the other side is where our meat birds are. So, but it's a really handy setup. But easy to clean is key. That's what you need. All right. So if you're going to get egg layers, um, you want to pick a breed that is kind of known for egg laying. I particularly like Bard Rocks and Ericanas. Mm -hmm. Other people like other breeds. You know, you just kind of experiment with different ones. Some people will have one different, you know, like they'll have a flock of 20 birds and every bird is different. So it's kind of whatever works for you. Um, it, by the time the hen is 30 weeks old, she'll lay two eggs every three days. A good hen will produce about 20 dozen eggs per year. Um, at 18 months, they'll molt, so they'll lose their feathers, take a little break. Um, the second year, the hens will have bigger eggs, but a little bit less production. And they kind of lay best between 45 and 80 degrees. Slow, they'll slow down. They'll kind of quit laying if it gets too hot or too cold because um, I think they're just trying to stay alive. Generally, hens kind of like, if you want to have chickens for egg laying, after about three years, that's as long as you're going to want to have them, and then you're going to want to replace your flock. You know, you can let them kind of have retirement, but I don't know. I usually try to get new chickens about every three years. Um, so uh, here's, they're going to have to have some sort of nest box. So these are just real 
you know, easy to make homemade nest boxes. I've had to put chickens kind of over in the little separate area when they're having problems. And if it's a, a hen, you can just actually put like a cardboard box in there with some, some bedding, mm -hmm. just something for it to go into that you generally like it up off the ground a little bit. Um, those are just something uh, my husband Bruce whipped together. And again, the old cement blocks, they're just on top of because we had them laying around. Um, so flock replacement, you know, just kind of kind of think about getting new ones every two or three years. I'm due for new ones this year. Um, egg production is definitely down. Um, you know, that's just kind of how it goes. If you're just, you can keep them though for as long as you want. Some people yeah. will have eight, nine-year-old chickens. That's super old. What's the oldest chicken you ever had? Oh my gosh, we had Toppy, and Toppy was like a Turkish sultan, inherited that chicken. It was not useful. It crowed. It went to the high school, to the animal science class, um, and I think that chicken lived to be like 14 years old. It was not a useful chicken. None of my chickens will ever be. Yeah, we had a old. rooster. Um, he was probably seven eight he was a pet he was real nice yeah. he was huge um so Do you let them die a natural death or do you butcher them or they he passed away i was very sad i'm 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 a town girl i get attached to my animals it was <laughs> uh, so you know it depends all right, so you want to get the commercial laying feed for hens. They need a certain mm -hmm. percentage of this and that, so or Heather knows how to grind it. Yeah, and you do a mix. Like, we order commercial, like, we have feed companies that we order because we have all different kinds of animals, but you got to mix it. It comes with a tag, and the tag on it says, add this, 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 you know, so you put it in there. So we grind it in big batches, and it's in garbage cans you know yeah i prefer there not to be meat products in the yeah. layer ration um i think a lot of like large scale commercial mm -hmm. uh feed has a lot of meat meat product in it um they're going to need calcium and grit they like scratch grains they like the things that they can eat safely mm -hmm. um, by scratch? um it's like uh cracked corn and other small grains they're, they're actually whole grains or cracked grains and you scatter it yep. and then they you know they do their little chicken thing and they scratch for it and it's just you know they're in, out in the if they were free range they would just have access to that kind of stuff out in the in the free range so i like to have to save on cleanup i like to put the food in the water outside so every morning i give them fresh water and i bring the food out and i've got this little enclosure that the food goes into so then they're not doing their stuff inside and then i'm not cleaning the inside as much so in the summer i don't think i ever put food inside unless it's going to be really bad weather that day and even like on a day like today they went out to get their food and water they'd rather be out than in and so I like to, I'm kind of turned into somebody who likes to have a pan of water as opposed to those water things because they always go on top of the water. And our, we hang ours. We have yeah. some on legs yeah. and stuff. So yeah. So I there are different types pan. of water yeah. and things. And you can kind of see the little um, their, uh, feed trough in the back. Um, you can, they can be plastic. They can be metal. Um, I had a wooden one for the food on the inside that a friend had made. Our food's all inside. Our yeah, because if you don't want to get wet, I've got a little thing for them. Yeah. shelter. Yeah. So, um, so with with their health, you know, it's always better to prevent disease than try to treat them later. Usually, by the time a chicken looks sickly, it's not going to make it. You know, it's animals will do anything to not look sick, and by the time they look sick, they're practically dead. Uh, so unless it's you know like a pet or your breeding chickens or it's a show chicken um usually the best practice is just to put the poor chicken out of its misery sadly um i don't know how many times i've tried to save a chicken and it just like i end up killing it a week or two later because it's just miserable quits eating quits drinking um you know you can always consult a vet or a county agent 
if you're, you know, if something happens to your flock, you're going to get one that dies here, gets sick mm-hmm. here. That just kind of happens. But if your whole flock gets sick, then you have to kind of wonder, like, did they contact some, contract some sort of disease? And that's where you're probably going to want to talk to a vet or a county agent. And it is mandatory in Wisconsin to register your flock with the Wisconsin Livestock Ident- mm-hmm. Identification Consortium. And then the nice thing is they'll send you emails like, you know, avian flu is in your area. It was found in a, you know, close by. So then you kind of watch out for that. And it would be better for everyone if some bad disease did get into your flock that you would just kill your flock so that it doesn't spread to the commercial or your neighbors, which is kind of the biosecurity thing about, you know, wearing different boots, not going over to other people's farms, you know, it, you, especially with the avian flu, yeah. you have to be really careful um, and just really monitor for disease. I'm not a vet. I don't, no. you know, I'm not an expert on chicken health, but I would consult a professional if I needed to. So far, you yeah. know, my chickens have been healthy. Yeah. The biggest threat is outside birds, like uh, little like sparrows, chickadees, any of those, like, you know, if they're, you see them in your coop, uh, you know, you have to be leery of those outside birds. Okay, so, you know, we kind of went over a lot of this, this the biosecurity, making sure they're not stressed out, they're safe. Chickens definitely have a pecking order, and sadly, there's always some chicken on the bottom of the pecking order, and that's a sad place for that chicken to be. I've had one time I had such like I had the misfit chickens and then I had the mean girls and these poor misfit chickens were just miserable. And I actually ended up giving them to a friend and then they were happy chickens. So it's just kind of weird. Chickens are like kind of mean little dinosaurs. They are, you know, especially to each other. Um, Kind of keep in mind litter management and coop cleanup, manure uh, is fertilizer and just always kind of be mindful of the weather um chickens are really good for your garden um the aged manure is good uh they will eat most of your weeds safely Mm -hmm. like i when i weed my garden and it's all pretty much safe weeds i just wheelbarrow it down there to the chickens and they'll eat all my weeds um they can some people have them free range in the garden after the garden gets a little bigger but i don't think i would ever try that but people do um you can um our neighbor has actually made a garden just for their chickens. Just for their chickens. Yeah, like the it's like an enclosed. It's super cute. Um, it's enclosed. It's got a fence around it. It is made just with things for the chickens. So it's like they let them out to go play, and they go in their little garden, eat crickets, and it's a chicken garden. So yeah, and if you had um, like a big enough garden, you could have like. You could put it into quarters and have like chickens here one year yeah. and then rotate them around and then kind of follow it a year or two later with your garden. Yeah. There's this whole thing with the chicken tractors where people move them around the pasture and it's good for your pasture as long yeah. as they, you know, you don't want them to get it down to the bare ground. There's organic farmers who will have their cattle in the part of the pasture and then the cattle droppings will attract bugs that are the the chickens like and then the chickens take care of the bugs and then the you know the cattle are here and then later the chickens are there so there's this whole pasture management that people do with cattle and chickens um i think chickens raising your own chickens is just good for the planet um commercially raised broilers and eggs are just it's really not sustainable it's it has to be because unless we all start growing enough chickens and eggs on a small Mm -hmm. scale. Like, you know, when my husband's grandparents had chickens, they would, you know, bring them to Red Wing and bring them around. And it was kind of a different system. There was a lot of small farms that could feed the local communities. And sadly, we can't, we don't do that. We probably can, but we don't. Um, And just the life of a chicken for a commercial egg layer or uh, an eating chicken is pretty awful. Um, I know what my chickens are eating. I know they've had a happy life. Um, And, you know, they just get to be chickens. Um, I had read an article recently that the life of a chicken really 
if it's going to have a good life or not just really is what breed it is. So 99% of all chickens are going to just be bred for commercial production. Um, and so, you know, this is what it looks like if you're a commercial chicken. If you're an egg layer, you basically sit in a cage and lay legs and eat. And if you're a meat bird, even if you have access to the outside, you're just going to be in a huge shed like that. And, you know, that's how we do feed the planet. So I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just not the kind of eggs and chickens I want to eat. Is that considered free range there? No. Well, if there was a little door where they could go outside, it would be considered That'd free be range. commercial free range. range. That's commercial well, free range. Right. Yeah. They're not in cages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cage free cage yeah cage that would be cage free yeah yeah yep. I think you know even if it's they they could be fed organic feed which is better than not organic feed yeah but this is still probably going to be their life and then you know here's my chickens so those are my meat birds they don't they get a very short life mm -hmm. and i'm going to eat them yeah but they get a good life you know they get to go outside and then my hens pretty much they're the 0.1% of chickens, you know, they get the best life possible. Um, here's Heather's oh. chickens. So you can't see, I got, I got to point to this. So, you know, if you, we, we have learned to bay the chickens, we get into showing chickens, you have to make sure that if they don't have lice, the birds do have, but it, you, people can't get it. We're not hot. So poultry lice, when you see, like, if you go to the store, there's like cans of this stuff to de-lice it um but people are not hot we can't get lice chickens so we had some birds you know and and they're you know handle it raise them they can be super duper tame and if there's one that you like the most your kids like that was henny penny and to tell her apart my kids would paint her toenails yeah um and so other things so there's that chicken tractor but this Chickens, like, they're super entertaining. You just said watch them. But they like to play. They like to be stimulated. Um, and so there are so many things that you can make to stimulate chickens, like toys and other things. But like um, like you can take, I was telling Kim, you can take a wiffle ball softball. You can put stuff like um, grass and dandelions in it, and they'll just peck it around. Um, and even if it doesn't have anything in it, it's just something that goes back and forth. It's like a toy. Um, you can see things where you can like stab a, you can have a thing, you put like a, like a head of cabbage. You can't do cabbage in large quantities, but if you put a cabbage on this and put it in there, it's like a pinata for chickens, you know? Um, and then like, there is the broken chair. They'll roost on that thing. We just take all kinds of odds and ends things, but you know, can you raise them? Were there are people in our 4-H club and you want your chicken in your house? Let's say you love it. Um, I want to recommend putting a chicken in the house because they're messy, <laughs> but there you look online, there are things called chicken diapers and you can make it out of a tube sock. So you take the sock, you know, the top part of your sock is, and you, you can go around like the neck and, and then it goes down and then you ball it up. And so it's like a chicken diaper and it, it goes out. You won't, you can't hardly even see that it's there. Um, and it'll make it so it won't poop in the house. Um, there we had, um, my girls, when, when chickens molt, they'll lose like their feathers in the pecking order. So you'll have chickens that pick on those chickens with no feathers. And so we actually made, um, chicken saddles. I mean, they're not really a saddle. It looks like a saddle, uh, but they wear it and covers up their bald spot and chickens will get sunburned too. So if you have chickens that are molting with no feathers, you can't keep them outside. They will burn. Like they, they need like sun protection. Um, so, I mean, there's so many things online. We have all kinds of books. People make clothes for their chickens. If you go online and Google the YouTube about chicken pants, it's so cute. Like there's chickens that like wear pants, you know, um, so they can be super entertaining. Certain breeds are very docile and very friendly. There's um, some birds that um, will like, they're just like a, a rooster and a hen. They're just kind of mate for life. They're just super cute. We had a couple um, salmon favorels that were like that. And they're they, like, they actually like just 
purr almost, but, um, so yeah. So thank you for coming and yeah. I think we'll wrap it up and there's questions. I don't see online questions, but we can answer questions later. And so thank you for coming next thank week. You. Um, next Thursday at six 30, April 11th, we have composting with Diana Elfuth. Um, so that should be a good program. So if you're interested in uh, learning how to make your chicken droppings and, yeah, yeah. and to compost, come to that. So thank you for Thursday, being here. Seven yeah, Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's the only day the room was available. So sure. we had to pick that day. All right. So thanks for coming. Thank you.